Hi everyone, so I've made a Reaper version of the One Orchestra template for the Spitfire BBC Symphony Orchestra plugin. Before we start, make sure that you got the most recent version of BBC SO as well as the most recent version of Reaper. I'm also strongly going to recommend that you get the SWS extension for Reaper as well. I'll link that below. So there's a download link for the template in the description. This is what you get in the zip file. You want to save this folder somewhere it won't get lost, maybe your Reaper Projects folder, as it comes with audio for the click track and the sync plot, and also subtract pictures. I haven't actually applied these because I don't think they look very good in Reaper. Okay, now we have a little bit of setup to do before we go. Let's just check our project settings. Um, so this project is set to 48,000 Hertz. I believe this is what Jake Jackson recommended. Just check it's gonna work with your setup. And if we go over to advance, we're gonna set the pan to stereo pan. Okay. Now let's edit Reaper's theme a little for our purposes. Let's go up to Options, Themes, Theme Adjuster, and we're going to drag this name size out as far as it will go. That will look a lot nicer for us. And for our purposes, I think we always want to show this for the routing and the pan and width, even if the mixer is visible. Now I just have a little recommendation. We're going to go up to our Preferences here and to our MIDI editor. I'd recommend setting the default shape for CC segments to Bezier. And also, if you're using the default settings for the MIDI editor, have a go at these settings. I think you'll find them much easier. Okay, so you want to save this file as a template so it's there when you need it, and of course, so you don't accidentally save over the original. We'll just go up to File, down to Project Templates, and then Save Project as Template. See, I've already done mine. Now the important part, how do we load an instrument ready to play it? Unfortunately, the solution to having all these instruments ready to go, but not actually loaded up in Reaper, is a little bit awkward, but once you get used to it, it should be fine. Let's go have a look at our flutes over here, our flute longs, or let's do our flute shorts actually. If we look at our FX window, see I've set all the effects to offline. We can bring this effect offline, oh sorry, online, sorry, and now we're ready to go. Now this is very important. If you want to add another instrument, right click, duplicate these tracks. What you don't want to do is just control C, control V to copy, because then it won't copy across all our nice routing. And of course we can even duplicate entire folders. And all that routing will be the same, and then you could put other instruments in there. And that'll all go to the right places. Let me show you some shortcuts that I've got set up to make this whole thing much, much easier. So we'll go up to Actions, Show Action List. And you don't need to use the same keys as me, these are just a suggestion. So I'm going to go to Find Shortcut to show you. On F1, I've got Set All FX Online for Selected Tracks. And on F2, I've got Set All FX Offline for Selected Tracks. So let's have a look at our oboes here. Again, we can open this up, see that it's offline. And if I press F1, then in just a sec, this will all come online. I press F2, and we'll go offline. I'll just bring it back online to show you for, we'll have a little talk about freezing and unfreezing tracks. Okay, so we're gonna find shortcut. So if I set F3 to freeze to multi-channel, I've set F4 to unfreeze tracks, and I've set F5 to show track freeze details. The reason I didn't just set everything up as frozen is because, again, Reaper doesn't give much of a visual representation of that, and it won't let me freeze empty tracks. Let's just make a quick little mini track, anything in here. That'll do. And I'm going to press F3 to freeze this track. As you can see, we've got a little audio track there. And then I can press F5 to see the details of what I've frozen. And press F4 to unfreeze the track, which will turn this back into MIDI and bring this effect back online. Let me show you that again without using the shortcuts. So if you're unfamiliar with freezing tracks, then you can get a better idea of what I'm up to. So, I'm gonna, so I've got my MIDI track on here. I've got my instrument all loaded and ready to go. And if I right click, Render freeze tracks, go down to freeze tracks to stereo or multi channel just in case. So it's turned uh, that MIDI into audio. 
and this effect has, well, effectively disappeared. But if we right click again, render freeze tracks, we can unfreeze these tracks, which brings this MIDI back and brings our instrument back. This is a great way to save on your CPU and your RAM. Okay, so now we know how to use the individual instrument tracks, but how does that work in this template as a whole? Okay, so let's load up another instrument. Let's go to this piccolo, we'll choose piccolo shorts, press F1, and the instrument should be loaded. And we've got our piccolo shorts ready to go. So right now I've got it set up so only basically the useful tracks show on this left-hand sidebar. But so you can more easily see where the signal goes, I'm gonna go up to view, gonna go down to the track manager, I'm gonna show you all the different stem tracks as well. Select all these, show them in the sidebar. Okay, so where does our piccolo sound go? So it goes out of this instrument track, travels all the way down to our wind short track. So these are the stems. From here, it goes up, from this wind short, sorry, it goes up to these winds, which sums up all these folders, and goes up to our mix monitor, by the way, I've just put some temporary effects on there. You want to put some effects on there, I imagine. It goes up to our mastering monitor. Again, I put some temporary effects offline there. You want to put your fancy magic mastering plugins on there. And from there, it goes out to your speakers and to your ears. Let's talk about these effects tracks. I had them hidden before because I think most people find them more useful to have them shown in the mixer. Here we can see those stems we were looking at before and some FX tracks. So I've got some placeholder effects. Obviously you want to add your own reverbs and delays and whatever you want to add. But let's say we want to add, say, some delay to our piccolo sound. So we've got our wind shorts here. Sorry, this is so cut off. If anyone has a solution for that, please let me know. Okay, so I can drag this up. I'm going to unmute this send to FX1, which means the signal, which means the signal We'll go over here, FX1, where I have set a delay. Let's bring this effects offline. This is just placeholder. And now we've got some delay on our piccolo sound. Now, where does this go in the template as a whole? Let's hide the mixer. So we've got our piccolo shorts. This audio travels down, down, down to the wind short from where it goes to FX1, which has our delay plugin on it. Now this sends just the delay signal, so it's set to mix 100%, up to the sort of this wind stem track, and up to the mix monitor, to the mastering monitor, out to your speakers. Now just one more thing, we're gonna have a look at the print tracks. We're gonna mute these, and scroll all the way down to these print tracks. So we can monitor the print tracks in two ways. We have the individual stems. We'll unmute that. And as you can hear, these don't have those effects on. And we have those full stems, or this one, which does have the effects on. These are all set. Well, not those ones, sorry. These are all set to record the output. So let's just start some recording. Let me just normalize that so you can see what's going on. There we go. So we've recorded onto our print tracks. Okay, I think that's it. That's about as good a tutorial as I can do. Before we go, let me just recommend a few more shortcuts that will make your life much easier. We'll go back up to our actions list. And I have set F to show FX chain windows for selected tracks. Let's go back up to our piccolo shorts. So now if I press F, then that will load up. That saves if I've got it here, having to click through, go, ah, oh, where's the effect? Next recommendation, find shortcut, Q. I've got Q set to unarm all tracks for recording. So what I found using this template over the past week, because it's such a big template, if I'm using these piccolo shorts and I think, oh, I want, say, a trumpet, and then I've got that all ready to go, 
and I forget that I've still got the piccolo set to record. Now I can just press Q and we'll unarm all these tracks for recording. Let me show you that again. Just press Q. There you go. And remember the SWS thing I recommended? If you are using that, you want this one. I've got it set to Control W, which is move closest grid line to mouse cursor. So now I can drag around the timeline like this and stretch it, which is great for writing to picture. All right, that's all I've got. If you've got any questions, please let me know in the comments and I'll try and help. Cheers.